Hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks, and welcome to my garage. This is my Sherman M4A3E8, the Experimental 8, or otherwise known as the Easy 8, Tier 6 American Medium Tank. A nicely mobile, quick reloading version of the M4, and very effective as a flanking and support tank. If you liked the M4, you're going to love the Easy 8. And you've got two decisions when you've played the M4. If you want to keep mobile and active, you, you want to go for the Easy 8. If you're fancying the, the tank being a little bit slower, but gaining an awful lot of armor, then you might want to head for the Jumbo. So the armor on this tank, still weak, it's still a medium. It's better than the M4, but then of course we are a tear up. It's got 64 millimeters on the front and 38 all round. And the mantle and the front beak of the tank are the strongest points. This tank will bounce shots when it's angled and keep it angled at all times. And it is excellent hull down with its strong mantle. But as with the M4, don't rely on its armor. You're better off staying out of sight and keeping hidden behind hills and dips. And behind rocks. If it's armor you're after, you're going to be better off at this tier with the Cheeto or the Sherman Jumbo. Now the cannon is initially a little bit disappointing. It's the same cannon as the M4. Now what the M made the M4 so strong was it was a tier 5 medium tank with a tier 6 cannon. Well now you've got a tier 6 tank with a tier 6 cannon. So initially it's a bit of a bit of a disappointment, but it's still very very effective with its penetration of 128 mm and a damage of 115. The turret rotation on this tank is a little bit on the sluggish side as well. So you don't as with the M4 you don't want to let your enemies get close because you will have difficulty tracking them. It has a very normal aim time of 2.3 seconds but an excellent reload of three and a half seconds, one of the best at tier six, and 1.2 seconds quicker than the M4. And what makes this tank really strong is it has a truly excellent 12 degrees of gun depression. It's the strongest point of this tank for playing this tank, hull down, keeping it behind ridge lines, peekaboo tactics, pulling back, reloading, and if anybody fires at you, the chances are they're gonna catch that strong mantle as you reverse back and bounce their shot. Now, as for speed on this tank, it's 48 kilometers per hour, which is quick enough with a decent power to weight ratio and the best chassis rotation of 39 degrees per second, means this tank is very maneuverable and quick to react to any problems that you have and aided by its horizontal volute spring suspension, known as HVSS, this makes this a very smooth tank to drive. The strengths of this tank are its excellent mobility, its amazing gun depression, and its fast reload. Played hull down with its strong mantle, it can be almost untouchable. But get round the back and the sides, and actually quite often the front, this tank is easy to penetrate and the gun is still quite inaccurate over large distances and is still as with the M4 unpredictable when you're sniping. The equipment I carry on this tank are binoculars so I'm an effective spotting machine, optics just to enhance its already excellent view range of 370 meters which is one of the highest at the tier and I also carry vents just to improve any other bits and pieces. I don't have any crew skills on this tank yet, it's a brand new crew, they are fully trained and the first skill that I'll be unlocking will be six tenths. This is a tank I've really enjoyed playing, I didn't expect to because of its relatively weak gun but I've got it all camoed up now, I've, I've spent some money and bought some camo to make it look nice because I think it's a really attractive tank and let's show you this tank on the battlefield. We're on airfield, it's a tier 7 game, 
We're in a tier 6 America medium, we're only one tier down, not too concerned about that. And I'm going to head straight for sort of E5, there's a nice little spotting point there. Normally I play H6, so I play up and down that sort of hill where the amphitheatre is. And for some reason today, and quite wisely too, I decide to play the other side of the map. And considering I'm one tier down, it's probably wise to be a little bit wary. So you can see the tanks off to a nice fast start. We're keeping up with the, uh, the T-34 in front of us quite happily. And we're just going to head up to that point. And hopefully get some nice flanking shots in. So I'm going to curl right round to the right. Got a nice bit of protection from the rocks which should give me protection from both the RTs. And the enemy are already pushing the hill. So I've got some nice coverage in the bushes here. We track the KV. And just need to be careful when you're up high like this, because this tank is quite tall, so it is an easy silhouette to hit. Get a nice shot into the side of the tank destroyer, still sits there, we get one in the tracks. Just ducking in, I got spotted. Could have been RT, not sure. Now the mistake I'm making here is I am completely side on to the enemies that I'm shooting. I should really angle the front of my arm around. I kept it that way because I was a little bit concerned about getting shot at from the hill, but if I'm engaging the enemy, I should be front on to them really. Because the sides of this tank are like butter. So we've got a T-3485, who's kind of sort of hull down behind the rock there. And he's the guy that's keeping me lit up. Target locked. Loaded and ready. There he is. Just trying to sniff out a shot. Move forward. And even though this tank hasn't got amazing acceleration, it's, it's forward and reverse movements are quick enough to get yourself out of trouble. Just seeing if I could get a cheeky shot in the IS's cupola, but I don't have the accuracy and it wasn't much of a target to aim at. Right, back onto the T-3485. That flew past and we get a shot. And I'm quite pleased with that because the T-3485's turret is pretty tough. Now something's shot me in the back, and there's a heavy down on the airfield, so that's it. My work is done in that position. That took a big chunk of my health too. So it's a T-150, Russian heavy on the airfield, I'm not sure which way he's looking. Oh, not at me. Oh, just clip his tracks, but not enough to track him. We've got a couple of tank destroyers looking down the airfield. And we're getting a little bit outnumbered here. So I'm sorry Mr. Japanese Heavy, but I'm going to leave you there because I don't fancy my chances. So I'm going to run. Throw caution to the wind and just keep moving. And I want to keep moving because I know I'm going to be getting close to Arty. And it's Arty. That I'm wanting to hunt down. I'm still in my light tank mode. Enemy exposed. Auto aim the British Sherman, and I'm just going to keep moving. I'm not going to stop to take him out because I don't want Artie getting a sniff. Enemy exposed. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there is quite a delay between you spotting a tank and it appearing on the map. It appears on the map much quicker 
and it comes up as you spotting it and that could have caught me out in this but I'm not sure <laughs> not sure what he's shooting at but he ain't shooting at me and we'll just see if we can take this T-34 just ah oh, just need to get one shot in come on poke your nose out go on you know you want yes <laughs> right I feel happy now I can turn my back on them right where's RT number two are they as stupid as RT number one and again this is where the delay comes in so keep an eye on the map because I didn't and RT appears now and now it says I've spotted the enemy that's that's a good few seconds delay which I must admit I've never really noticed right blind shot into RT and somebody else finishes them off right one tank destroyer left in the cap well I'm quite pleased with what I've done here so I'm just going to get throw caution to the wind I'm going in and he's certainly going to know I'm close now because the air raid siren is going to be going off I'm just going to and oh side on very nice surprise and here we have the maneuverability to just get round. There's no way this SU is ever going to get a shot on us. And there we go. Game over. A really effective bit of spotting at the beginning. We found a really strong position on the map. And then when that wasn't working, relocated quickly to try and take Artie out. 6,000 XP on the first win of the day and a couple of missions. 44,500 silver. Ace tanker badge, 1,800 damage, and we came top in a tier 7 game. So overall, a really pleasing game in the highly manoeuvrable Easy 8 Sherman. We're on Warthorn Sacred Valley. It's a tier 6 game. We're top tier, hurrah, in our tier 6 American medium Easy 8 Sherman. And the first thing I'm going to do is what I always try and do, and that's mow down this little structure here, which is always in the cap. And that way, the enemy can't hide behind that if they try and cap. Now, I always play the east of this map. I rarely play the north or the west. And as it happens, all three of our light tanks are all going in the same direction. So that's not great for spotting for the team. Ideally you'd want them to cover the whole map between the three of them. So I'm heading this way to do some spotting and hopefully get up to the village where it's a relatively strong point to capture if you can. Now, the only trouble is I'm out here on my own so I need to be careful. I am top tier but I'm only a support tank. I don't really have the armour for one on one challenges uh, but I've got a medium catching up with me so I'm a little bit happier now they've got a little bit of support hopefully the tank destroyer in the cap is looking in this direction and right we've got a type 58 just see if I can shoot through the rubbish but I can't and I take a hit So between the two of us, we'll just see if we can take this Type 58 out. Just get my armour angle forwards. And there we go. First kill. Away we go. So the guy that's up here with me is Oliver Twix. And... He's going to help me support up here. We've got a Cromwell. Oh, could have done with that shot going in. We get an auto aim in. And I'm going to keep wiggling around because I'm not quite sure what Artie's up to. But I'm just going to go in because there is two of us and we've got a light in the valley. And 
But Cromwell is not the not the slightest bit interested in me. He's going straight for Oliver Twix. So we're just going to auto aim. And now that I'm all lit up, I'm taking shots from over yonder. So going to boot it downhill. And you can see that this tank, you know, downhill especially, will just move and get you out of trouble very quickly. Right. There's the two tank destroyers. They were probably the guys that were shooting at me. So we get a shot in the Nash Horn and track them. And finish them off. So we've got the light. And Oliver Twix going towards the cap. And there's an SU. Ugh. This is just where the accuracy can let you down sometimes over over distance. Right. So Oliver's going in for RT and takes RT out. So I'm happy with that. So somewhere over here is that SU. Yeah, an oddball saying, yeah, don't cap, attack, and I agree. We've got this in the bag, we've still got RT. So I'm saying to Oliver, come on, mate, out the cap, follow me. Don't want to be capping. Let's have some fun and finish, finish the enemy off. Right, so we've got a tank destroyer behind the rock here. Oliver Twix is engaging that tank destroyer. Now I'm pretty sure that that's the SU, and I get a bit of a bit of a surprise as I come around the corner because it's not the SU. It's the Churchill GC, and yeah, no point in aiming at the front of that thing. It's super thick, but I've got the maneuverability to get round the back, and there's absolutely no way this Churchill is going to get a shot in. So Oliver comes out of the cap, so we're not capping anymore. There's the SU. Bounce a shot from the SU, bearing in mind it is two tiers town. And yeah, that was that was going to happen. Now, the enemy medium, the only one that's left, looks like it's chasing Oliver Twix. We've got Oddball Butif in the valley, a D6 going in. And Oliver got taken out by that T-34-85. And had he not capped that T-34-85, probably wouldn't have known that he was even there. I mean, he shouldn't have been capping. It just tells the enemy where you are. Ready to fire. And we were looking very strong. So I'm just rolling backwards and forwards behind here, trying to avoid shooting. Odd balls going in. And... Lovely shot for Marty. Finishes the game. Hurrah. And we got four kills out of that game. So how do we do overall? 2,000 straight XP. 50,000 silver. Class 1 mastery badge. Four tank kills. 1,400 damage. Just, just a nice all-round game, really. Not massive on damage, but we got the, we got the kills and we came top. I really do like the Easy 8 Sherman. It's just a very adaptable, very playable tank.